Hello, everyone, and welcome in to another edition of Indiana In-Depth. Hope you all had a great week. My name is Max Resic Twinkle, and as always, Richard Fant, my co-host. How are you doing today, Richard? I'm doing amazing, man. Ready and excited for another week to just review the Hoosiers and, you know, go from there. You know what? This week, let's just get right into it with play one. <laughs> I'm sure Hoosier fans know how this game went. So the first play we're going to be looking at, Michael Penix finds DJ Matthews deep down the left sideline after a nice double move. So that's what we're going to talk about here. Um, but with with defending, that's where we're going to start. At what points are defensive backs supposed to peel off and attach to a new player? Is that something that's scheming or is that sort of an instinct for defensive backs? Yeah, right now when I, when I look at the coverage, um, I see a man scheme for the most part. Um, and so this was just DJ making running a heck of a route, um, you know, selling that post route. And the DB got caught looking in the backfield and he planted for that um, corner and beautiful double move. Um, ball a little bit underthrown, but still a completed pass for a good about 40 yard gain. Um, all around, you know, it was a great execution. Um, I think the Hoosiers would have loved to see even more of this. Um, and just, yeah, the name of the game is executing. And at key times, they did not execute. But this is one play when they did. Yeah, and so you mentioned the pass there. Just going to say it here. One out of ten, how would you grade this pass? Ten being the best that could have been thrown. One being really got lucky here that that was completed. I wouldn't say it was lucky to be completed. And when you look at the whole play, actually, Penix does an amazing job always of staying in that pocket. Um, not a lot of quarterbacks have that ability to stay in the pocket, no matter who's rushing them, what's in their face. And he does that. So with that being said, somebody in his face, it was actually a great throw. Um, but I'm sure he's like, man, I wish I could have got it out there a little bit more and let DJ run under it. Um, and I don't think number three or nine is catching DJ if he runs under that. So um, I think it was pretty well thrown. Obviously, nothing you could do about the pressure. Um, for a double move, you need time, and the line gave him just enough time to get that pass off. And so these are some of the types of passes we saw Ty Freifogel getting a lot last year. What has been different this year that's prevented him from getting those targets? You know, it's hard. and he, He's a guy he can't go under the radar anymore, one. Um, I think when he does have opportunities, there were a couple drops in this game, um, which obviously I know he'll address this week. He's a great receiver. Um, you won't see many of games like that for him. So I think he'll just get in the groove. Um, DJs, you know, they're getting him in the system. And uh, Fry Fogel is going to – he's going to come on board. The coaches are going to find ways to get him involved even more um, because, you know, the name of the game, get it to your best players, like them, let them make plays. And the Hoosiers are doing well and uh, playing well when Ty Fry Fogel is also involved. Got it. All right, so we'll move right along into our next play here. It is going to be the Cincinnati kick return touchdown by Trey Tucker. A fantastic return there. So Jared Smolar is going to kick it off with 354 remaining in the third quarter. Trey Tucker is going to receive it all the way at the one-yard line. He's going to find the hole, burst through here, and then it's just green grass in front of him. He's going to take it to the house for six. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about here, I'm going to pause it right at this moment. Is that just a coincidence or is it perfect execution that these five Cincinnati return guys are all in a straight line? That's normal. Um, they get they all have their yard markers that they're in front of the returner with the ball. So that's that's normal right there. Um, and this is where Indiana wanted to kick it. They wanted to push them to that left corner um, and kind of make sure to keep them on that one side of the field. Obviously, that is not what happened. Um, Cincinnati did a great job of picking up a man and Trey found the cutback lane. And as you see there, number five, he's the backside safety. He got sucked too far in, came too close. He's the last line of defense, basically. Um, and so I, I have played that position. So I know exactly when I watched it live, I saw oh, he's way too far over. And if there's a hole for a cutback, which uh, Trey found and he hit that fast full speed, number five overran and he was able to take it to the house and 
make a big impact play. Anytime you can get a big play on special teams, it is a good chance to help you win the game. And this was a key play right here um, to score without your offense or defense being on the field. And you mentioned the backside safety head coach, Tom Allen mentioned this play and the backside safety at his Monday press conference. Take a listen at what he had to say about the play. Yeah. So the kickoff return, uh, just devastating play, to be honest with you. Um, just got momentum, big scoring and drive and really take the lead. And, uh, you know, had, uh, you know, our backside safety was out of position and uh, got a little, got nosy, got too aggressive. And uh, he's the cutback player. He's the, you know, the half field safety on that side of the field. And so you, even if it, you, know, you don't want it to get to him, but even if it does, he should be right there to make the play. And, and he was not. And that's really was the reason why it was a touchdown. I uh, had a couple guys that, uh, that were supposed to, you know, when you have your lane, they got out of their lanes. And the two guys next to each other didn't do a good job of playing with technique. We're going to make some personnel changes. So that was head coach Tom Allen discussing the play. And he mentioned the backside safety. What was it that Juwan Burgess, who was the backside safety number five on this play, what was he supposed to do? Right here, you're the last line of defense. So although you do want to come over because you don't want it to be too hard, he overran it. Um, if you see right there, he runs all the way to the far numbers. And that's always a sign of disaster for the backside safety. And he's somebody that's been in this system for years. Um, he knows better. He's a vet. And so he should have slowed down probably – closer to where the hash was so then he could keep it to where Trey would have had to either go straight um, or run right into him and make the tackle. So for him, I know that's a mistake he's beating himself up on, especially being a veteran. Um, and that has to get fixed or, you know, a lot of teams will continue to see this and try to exploit it. Um, obviously, Taiwan Mullen is usually in that position. Um, so not having him in that position uh, hurt as well. And you mentioned looking at other teams in the previous week against Idaho, IU special teams was so strong in their kick coverage and also in their return game. Any major differences that stood out to you this week against Cincinnati, or was it just that one kind of split second in game decision that cost them the touchdown? Yeah, I think, you know, one, the level of talent is higher. It's number eight team in the country. Um, the margin of the room for error is very small. Um, and so right here, you make one tiny error and you got a guy who looks to me about a 4-3 guy, 4-4, four, four, very fast guy. And he found the one little hole, you overrun it, and it's a touchdown. And so for me against a team like Idaho, you make him get away with overrunning it, um, having a few mistakes. But a team like Cincinnati, one of the best teams in the country, clearly in um, contention for the college football playoffs, you can't have these type of mistakes um, because they get exploited right here and just make it even harder to win. Moving on to our next play here. With 12-18 to go in the fourth quarter, Desmond Ritter is going to find his man in the end zone for six. And just a nice fade route there. And you were a corner. You played corner for the Hoosiers. You also played corner in the NFL. I'm just going to let you take it away here. What are your thoughts on this play? Yeah, when I, I go from the beginning, um, you had an All-American corner. Um, you're the guy. Um, they have a taller receiver here, but... Honestly, this is the matchup I want if I'm Coach Brandon Shelby and Coach Allen, my best guy against their receiver. Um, but when I look from the start, the key for every corner DB is you want to win at the line of scrimmage when you're pressed. And Taiwan Mullen does not. Um, his technique right here is, is bad. And I know Coach Shelby told him that. He turns his hips to the inside. Um, so right then, he's already kind of out of position and he's now playing catch up. And it's harder to play catch up against a guy that has four to five inches against you. And so him not having that great technique losing at the line makes his job a little harder and this is a greatly thrown ball um and all and since he's kind of on his back hip he can't really play that ball well and so right now you throw it up high enough kind of try to keep it away from that db and the receiver goes up makes a great catch use his length um and so for me the biggest key from this um was just at the start of the line and you can see that at the beginning Taiwan Mullen was almost completely turned facing the inside and there's no reason for that um for a guy that talented and obviously confident um just trusting in your technique and you see right there how he's open um receiver knocks that outside hand down and is able to get by him a little bit and now it makes it a lot harder for um Taiwan Mullen to kind of cut recover and make a play especially with a perfectly thrown ball like that 
Yeah, and you mentioned the perfectly thrown ball. Got to give props to the Heisman Heisman candidate, certainly someone who's in the running and contention for it, Desmond Ritter. A great ball from him. And you mentioned the importance and technique of the hips for Taiwan Mullen. We looked at, a, looked at a play earlier last week in which he kind of turned his hips a little earlier and gave up a touchdown against Idaho. So this is two weeks in a row now where we've talked about Mullen giving up a touchdown. Do you think this is just kind of a habit that he's gotten into with that, that hit moment or is our team's kind of starting to figure out his weakness a little bit? Yeah. You know, what I will say is, um, there, listen, command to man coverage, being a cover corner is difficult. And there's a difference between this defense, um, even last year. And then when I played, we played man a lot. Um, I was on an Island. Um, I like to call myself a true cover corner and the way I played and T Mullen is, he can play man. Um, he can play zone. He gives you everything all around. So for him in those man situations, he has to lock in. Um, there's no room for error, especially when you're the guy. And I see what he was trying to do here. Um, he wants to turn. He's turning his hips because he wants to use his outside hand to jam, force that receiver to go in. But the problem was he di he didn't stay on the outside shoulder of the receiver and that receiver knocked it down and was able to get around him and kind of get him in kind of a stack position. Um, and just had too much room to go up and catch the ball. Um, T. Mullen just couldn't get him, obviously pushed off to the sideline. But I think the biggest thing for T. Mullen is the locking back into those um, fundamentals um, because he's a great player, um, obviously All-American, All-Big Ten. We know that. Um, but now he has to go out and show it every weekend. You're going to get every team's best. Um, I did. Once I made All-Big Ten, I was undersized, and people wanted to see if I was the real deal. Um, you go win some battles, you go lose some battles, but this is one that you can't lose. Um, and I expect him not to lose one like this in the red zone in a key moment in the game. So uh, I just know, I believe he's going to, you know, get back focused up, ready to go. And he's going to show against a pass heavy Western Kentucky team um, why he is an all American corner. The next play that we're going to take a look at here is an excellent run by Davian Irvin Poindexter, a walk on to the team who has quickly become their go-to guy on third down. We've seen him get the call on many different third downs throughout the year. So third and six here, he's gonna, just going to take the handoff and find the gap on the right side of the line and go all the way down to the Cincy 20-yard line before he's finally taken down. So what I want to talk about first here, we'll get to Poindexter, but on the offensive line, Matthew Bedford, number 76, has now moved over to that right guard spot. And in between, right tackle Caleb Jones and center Dylan Powell. What are the different skill sets involved in those positions? Just wanted to get a little bit of offensive line talk in here. You know, everybody's different. You think about a guy like Dan Feeney who could play center, right guard, left guard, right tackle, left tackle, and have that versatility. Um, and you got a guy like Caleb, bigger guy, um, good feet for his size. But, um, you know, all of them should be able to be interchangeable. Um, obviously, we know that, that there's been some injuries on the O-line, some movement over these last three weeks. Um, and so it's key having him back um, and having him in that position. And I think right here, you just see a great job of blocking um, to start with, to give that hole for Poindexter to run through. I mean, looks like a little inside zone to me and everybody Bedford seals off his man. Um, the center right here does a great job of checking with Bedford and then getting to that linebacker to also block him off, as you see right there, and then turns and picks up this blocker to create that hole. And Poindexter right there does the rest. Um, great plant and cut and uses his speed to continue to get some yardage. Um, hangs on to the ball on this tackle with the DB trying to pu punch it out. But um, from the beginning of this play, um, great call by Coach Sheridan. Great execution by the O-line and great run and finish um, by Poindexter. And definitely got a shout out walk on nation. Um, you know, sometimes a lot of them don't get to touch the field, but when they do, they often make a big impact. Um, and you see that right here. And then you talked about how Poindexter was able to get into the open field here. What makes it so difficult to take a guy down in the open field? We hear a lot the term open field tackle. What's it like as a defender trying to take down a guy in the open field? Oh, man, I tell you, it is a defender's worst nightmare when you get a quick guy, fast guy, uh, agile individual in the open field where it's just you and a whole bunch of space. He can go left. He can go right. Um it doesn't really matter. And right here, uh, obviously, 
number three, that safety comes up. That is an open field tackle. And Poindexter is able to put enough plant in the ground and go right to make him miss. Um, and that was a bad angle by that safety, but it's hard. You get these fast guys and they're only evolving, getting faster, quicker. Um, and so, you know, for me, I was the type of guy who I just tried to shoot my shot, go right in, take out the legs, um, go in full speed before they can make a move. Um, some guys are able to break down and do a great job of squaring them up and bringing them down. But right here, Point Dexter did a great job of making him miss um, and getting an extra, looks like about 15 to 20 yards um, after getting away from number three right there. Yeah, great run by Point Dexter. So we're going to move into now our final play of the week. It is unfortunately Michael Penix's third interception of the game, coming with 3.44 to go in the fourth, a crucial moment. The Hoosiers only down by six at this point. Penix is just going to drop back here. The pocket collapses. He's going to run outside to his left and then basically just toss it directly to the defender, unfortunately, and that kind of was the nail in the coffin in this game, put the Hoosiers out of reach. So this is the second game now that Penix has three interceptions. Any thoughts on what the problem is here? Uh, you know, the first game, you chalk it up to, you know, obviously a, a drop pass, um, bad communication. Um, um, you know, you had a basically a miscommunication in routes against Iowa. But when I look at this game, um, I'm seeing Penix trying to be Superman too much, um, trying to play hero and make plays that aren't there. And that's one thing um, they tell you this in every position, especially at quarterback. Um, you don't have to, hey, live to fight another down and the next play. And it's third and 16 here on a potential game winning drive. Um, and so for me as a veteran quarterback, thinking about Penix right here, his mindset should be throw this ball away, maybe dump it to your running back to get two or three yards. Um, but you know right now you're going for it on fourth down. So now you, with this throw, just an errant throw, and you rob them of being able to go for it on fourth down. So what I know Coach Allen's still confident. I'm still confident in Penix. It's a reason why he has the reputation he does as far as an all-Big Ten quarterback. Um, but what we're going to see now is we're going to need to see leadership from him. Um, but also understanding that he doesn't – every play doesn't have to be a big play. Um, sometimes thrown it away is best. Uh, living to fight that down. So I think decision making is going to obviously play a big key. He cannot continue to turn the ball over at this rate for the Hoosiers to have success. And obviously, if he does continue to turn the ball over like this, eventually it's going to make it hard for Coach Allen not to go away with him. But right now, um, if you're Hoosier Nation, be confident. He's a great quarterback. Um, he's proven that time in, time out. Obviously, his record as a starter speaks for itself. Um, but right here, yeah, on this play, he just has to throw that away, get rid of it. And fourth and 16, then you try to make the play. And you can throw a pass like that on fourth and 16, basically because you're just trying to make a play. That's your last down, um, but not on third and 16, especially. Yeah, and it, it definitely was a great jump on the route there by the cornerback. Anything that goes into reading the quarterback's eyes a bit that you saw on this play? For me, it was just making a play at an opportune time. You get the quarterback scrambling, and this ball didn't have a lot of juice on it um, just because, you know, throwing it back across your body, which I, I haven't played quarterback, but I hear them coaches say all the time, do not throw the ball across your body. is usually disaster. That's going to come next, and that's what happened. So um, just the DB doing a great job of reading the quarterback, seeing what was coming, the ball hung in the air just a little bit. Um, and him being able to make that play um, and, you know, is a key play kind of one, the return was great as well to put him in position to score a little easier um, and kind of seal that game. Yeah. And I just wanted to finish off talking about this a little bit. You mentioned kind of having faith in Michael Penix and how it's going to take leadership to kind of finish out the season. What is it like in a locker room supporting your signal caller when they're having a period of struggles on the field. Yeah, it's like anything, man. It's a game and we all have our good games, bad games, have going to a little slump. But I think it's that support from your teammates that helps get you out of it. Um, obviously, that belief, you know, for me, I saw fans talking about Vince Penix and this and that. And my thing is, yeah, he had a rough two games, but they also lost the two top 10 teams. Um, and so there's a lot of football left to play nine games. So this can easily turn in to, you know, uh, a 10 and two season and the big 10 championships still in play. All the goals that the Hoosiers set in, maybe besides the national championship, 
are still easily into play. So I think as a fan base, supporting these guys, getting behind them, continuing to come out to those games, um, speaking positivity. Um, but then from the team, you know, we stay close in it. And I know those guys are close as ever. They believe in each other. They know the work they put in and the talent they have. I mean, I expect going forward for them to continue to um, tighten it up. They know the expectations from Coach Allen and the rest of the staff. Um, and I believe the Hoosiers are going to get together um, and finish strong the rest of the season. And who knows what that record is, but I know one thing, they're certainly not out of uh, most of their goals for this season. Yeah, definitely. They did have lofty expectations coming into this year, but a lot of people discussed about that may not look like obviously going undefeated or, and there are certainly ways that you can find success and kind of check off those expectations still remaining this year. So thank you for that insight into the locker room and learning yeah. something each week as we go along here. No, definitely. <laughs> I think it's important. And I know Coach Allen is preaching it now one week at a time. Um, you know, that's that's it. Focus on the opponent. So Western Kentucky is up next. They're a good team who can throw it all around. Um, you're going on the way. So anytime you're going away, obviously, it's a little difficult. So focusing on one game at a time, staying together, um, you know, and one thing I think that is always a recipe usually for some success. Um, but obviously without it, <laughs> it is going to be very hard to be successful. But I, I, I know them. I know the coaching staff that's there and they'll, they'll be just fine. So that's going to do it for us this week on Indiana in depth. Thank you so much, Richard, as always for providing some great looks into the plays here that make these games pan out the way they do. I definitely learn something each week. So thank you for that. And also thank you to our viewers. who have gotten some great feedback thus far, people interacting with our series. So thank you so much. We really appreciate the love and we'll see you next week.